to save your soul. I love the way he says it. He tells us to lay aside all filthiness and superfluidiness. Let me, let me tell you what fluidiness is. It says, lay aside all dirtiness and superfluidiness means, superfluidiness means, you know, just, just extras. It says, lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of nothingness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. It says, receive it with meekness. Receive it with meekness. Receive it with meekness. Meekness means receive it with humility. That's what it means. It says, receive the word with what? Humility. Don't argue with the word. So when you submit it to the word, he says, receive the word. You know, some people's opinion first is to be defensive with the word of God. Some people's opinion first is to is to disagree with the word of God. It says you can do that with other people. You can do that with your friends. You can do that with your lecturers. You can do that with your bosses. You can do that in the family. He said, but when it comes to the word of God, he says, receive it with meekness. That means every time the word of God says something, your posture is humility. I want to receive this. And it's a way to think. So it gives us a posture when it comes to God's word. It gives us a posture. The posture, so there's a posture when it comes to God's word, I will receive it with weakness. I'm open for correction. And you know what the Bible is about correction? He says, the son, the father love it, he chastises it. So when God's word come and corrects you, it's because you are loved. If you're not loved, God's word will abandon you. Correction is a proof of God's love. Correction is a proof of God's love. And how does God correct us? God does not correct us by giving us sickness. God corrects us by his word. And the way you know you're growing is this. This is the way you know you're growing spiritually. Your ability to begin to make adjustments. The adjustment you make shows you're growing spiritually. Someone say hallelujah. All right, so let's keep reading now. He says, Wherefore, let's lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of nothingness and receive with meekness the engrafted word. And, and you know the thing, you know, this sometimes is the most difficult. Let me tell you, there are two sides to God's word. Number one, there are things in God's word that you are used to. It's just something you're used to naturally. You're just used to this. You're just literally used to this. But there's part of God's word that you're not used to. So I give an example. Let's say that your Christian background, you come from a Christian family that is like an apostolic church background, a praying church. Because you grew in that family, things like fasting will be easy for you. Things like prayer will be easy for you. Yes or no? Exactly. So when they teach fasting and prayer, it's easy for you to jump on it because it's easy for you. But let's say you come from like an Anglican background. Let's say you come from like a Catholic background where praying it's like methodological you know when you come to this place and they teach praying the other way it's you begin to struggle the meekness is to say although i'm not used to it does not mean i cannot learn it i'll give an example some of you came from backgrounds where your where, where your parents were like giving christians titan christians and all of those kind of things now that you're born again you find it easy to give and to tithe but some of you came from areas where it's very your parents were not that way in fact they question it they challenge it now that you're born again it's very difficult for you and meekness shows in the area where you were not brought up or you were brought against so when he says, receive the word with meekness, it's easy to receive the word. There are areas where you're already open about God's word. Where you are open. I mean, this is, I'm just open about God's word. And the area where you are like, mm, well, maybe not know you're not be brought up there. In those areas, it says, receive the word with meekness. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So, for example, when we're teaching about things like maybe we're teaching about how God wants you to be, God wants you to be protected, how God wants you to do well, people are like, amen, amen, amen. But once you start teaching it about evangelism, someone says, oh, seven is no hot today. Is it pastor just to talk? You know, it's no hot. Why is it not hot? The reason why is that that's an area you don't like. But it's all balanced diet. You can't keep feeding on God, bless me, God bless you, God bless you. You're going to have spiritual kashoko. And that's why you see some Christians, they are bent spiritually. And the reason why is that they are feeding on one type of God's food. 
in the word of God, there's blessings. In the word of God, there's long suffering. In the word of God, there's the gift of the spirit. In the word of God, there's what? There's the fruit of the spirit. In the word of God, there's progress. But in the word of God, there's persecution. The Bible says, they that must live godly in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution. I don't know if you heard that. He says, you must suffer persecution. You must suffer for Christ. The same way some people say, ah, wow, look at your car. They're clapping for your car. We must see your suffering and clap for your suffering. Our sufferings are badges for Christ. Paul says that me have been beaten five times. I've been, I've been shipwrecked four times. He was bragging in what he had suffered for Christ. But we must have a, we must have, you know, you must have an open heart towards it. He says, yeah, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will what? Will suffer persecution so if you have not suffered persecution maybe you are not living godly in Christ Jesus I remember the first time I remember the first time I got persecuted for Christ I mean I got persecuted for Christ so many times you know but the first time it really happened to me it was it was in 1991 I just preached to my friend's girlfriend in 91 or 92 I preached to my first girlfriend and my, fr- my, girl- my friend's girlfriend got born again we were all in secondary school and um, he got born again, and you know he got born again, and um, you know they used to kind of make out, like kiss and all of those kind of things. So, you know the guy went to her, and they tried to make out again, and the guy was like, "Oh no!" The girl was like, "No, no, I'm not born again." And he said, "Who preached to you?" He said, "Well, how did you preach to me?" The guy just came to my hostel and gave me a dirty slap. <laughs> he said, "Who sent you to preach to my girlfriend?" And you know it's the kind of slap that they slap you and cannot retaliate because you're meant to be like Christ. Because how can I preach Christ and I'm slapped for Christ and I begin to retaliate? He said, they that must live godly in Christ must what? Suffer persecution. You must learn to brag in your suffering for Christ. You must learn to brag and say, it rained, but I went to church in the rain. What a glory. 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 You must be able to say things like that, that, that chief offered me one million to come and sleep with him. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. What a glory. What a glory. The world will think you're stupid, but you are what? You are living right for Christ. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. You must think to say things like, Ah, that girl, that, that Instagram body. She just messaged me and sent me a nude pictures and came to my office and said she wants to just take me somewhere. Let's do, let's do a quick, a quickie. And when she said that, I was like, I belong to Jesus. I don't do such. And, and your friend are going to be like, ah, but boy, you slow. Ha, ah, but boy, you slow. But when they say that kind of thing, you are like, praise God. I'm just another Joseph that can say no to the things of each so I can focus on the kingdom to come. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what it means. That's what it means. He said, they that they must, look at that scripture again. They that must live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. And listen to me quickly. If you are a people pleaser, you will find your Christian life very difficult. If you're a people pleaser, you will not be able to live for yourself. You will not be able to live for God. The reason why is that your opinion of others are going to carry you away into the world. Because sometimes and most times, God is going to tell you what is not comfortable, what is not conventional, what others do not agree with. And the only reason why you would do it is because you know God spoke to your heart. God told Abraham, he said, pack your things and leave your father's house. If Abraham was a people's pleaser, he will not be able to leave. Imagine Moses. Moses was born and he was raised up as a Pharaoh's son. And the Bible says, and Moses denied all of that, that he he may pursue a higher calling. Sometimes you want to join the workforce in church and you tell your friends, let's do this together. And they say, no. I'm like, well, if you guys are not doing it, I'm doing it myself. I don't need you to encourage me to serve God. Praise God. I said, praise God. So we begin to talk about the concept about how we should embrace the word of God with meekness. I mean, in recent times, you know, I've seen the videos, I've seen all the blogs carry the videos and all of those kind of things, you know, and it's funny when you see it on social media, but the question is that how is it impacting you? 
because you were raised, you, you know, I mean, you, 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 know, you, you know, just the kind of guy you were. you were. You were just raised to be a sweet talker. You were raised to be a sweet talker. You know how to sweet talk anybody. You can lie. And now you're hearing teachings about truth. Teachings about righteousness. You need to correct the tongue. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So let's read again. Verse 21. James chapter 1. You need to do better with this. Your sound. James chapter 1 verse 21. Wherefore lay aside all filthiness. It, you know, you know, and I began to speak about all filthiness. You know, there are just some things that are filthy. Just some things you're filthy. Someone said, what do you smoke? What do I smoke? He said, oh, what do you smoke? And instantly, just say, yeah, 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 weed. <laughs> it says, lay aside all filthiness. Praise God. Lay aside all filthiness means dirtiness. Dude, we can be single people. We can be chatting and you're asking me what's the color of your pants. And you say, and you don't say, do you want to see? <laughs> and these are Christian singles chatting because he said, he said the bra I'm wearing is a laced orange bra, you know, or it's a laced red bra, you know, with dotted holes along the side, and the pants is this and this and this and this. And you are in that conversation. I want to ask you, as you're having that conversation, I'm sure the anointing is rising up within you. <laughs> no, when you have that kind of conversation, what happens is that the flesh begins to get up. Those conversations enhance the flesh. Those conversations motivates your flesh. Most conversations get you into a sinful mood. There are conversations that once they say, hey, what are you wearing? What color of underwear do you like? You just say, you just leave that WhatsApp group. And the reason why is that you know those conversations will pollute you some more. And remember what the Bible says. Evil communication corrupts for good manners. Not good manners corrupts evil communication. That means the tendency for you to be corrupted by evil manners is higher than for good manners to corrupt what? For good manners to corrupt what? Evil manners. It's the one that carries oil that must be careful. The one that carries nothing has nothing to fear. Because there's nothing to lose. You are the one that carries oil. You must be the one that must be careful. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. He says, wherefore lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of nothingness. See how the Bible describes this. Of nothingness. You must be careful. You must be careful the things you like on social media. You must be careful the things that, like, oh my God, look at that. You must be careful the things you are envious on social media. Because the things you envy, the time is where your heart is. Everybody that drives a Range Rover is a big boy. Everybody that drives a G-Wagon is a big boy. Listen to me. I want to know how they got it. Because for me, by their fruit, you shall know them. I'm not just concerned with what they drive. I'm concerned with what is driving them. It says, and receive the word with engrafted. So, you must be concerned. If every time you like, you always like things like cars, like, like clothes, when will you like prayer meetings? When will you like things like that? And it's something you must train yourself in. You must begin to have desires like, you know, in this month of consecration, let me spend my first three hours in prayer. You know, you can do that as a cell, you can do that as a choir, you can do that as a protocol group. And I said, I want to spend the first three hours in prayer. I, I, it's something I dream for myself. Glory to God. Let me go the first one full week, reading the Bible morning and evening. This month, I want to be the first time I will ever give my tithe to God. Glory to God. 
So he says, Wherefore lay aside all feeling and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. See what it says next. It says, But be ye doers of the word, not hearers alone. And that's what I'm going to alone deceiving yourself. The reason why is that if you keep hearing the word of God and you don't do it, the transforming power of the word of God does not happen in your life. It only takes place to those that do it. So no matter how much you hear about forgiveness, if you don't forgive, it can never affect you. Hearing the word doesn't make sense. It's doing the word that brings about transformation. And as New Testament people, the doing ability is in us as we hear the word of God. Say, I'm a doer of the word. Say, I'm a doer of the word. Verse 23. Verse 23. He says, if any man be a hearer of the word of the Lord and not a doer, he is like unto a man that beholds a natural face in the glass and behold, and he beholded himself and go at his way and straight away forget it. And that's the problem. You hear the word of God, but you've forgotten. How do you put the word of God in your mind? When you finish from church, let me tell you something you must do. Learn to always go back to the YouTube page and watch it. You might not watch the whole message. Divide it into, the message is 40 minutes. Every morning, watch 15 minutes. That's way, when you watch, go over the Bible verses again. You, you, are, you are training yourself not to become a forgetful hearer. There's something about the word of God, eh? When the word of God is inside you and you meditate, the word changes you as a person. You are changed into what you see. But the thing is that you must be mindful of the word. Praise God. I said, praise God. You know, I was, I was talking to this person that was a lesbian, um, that was a lesbian and God changed. And we're having a conversation. And the person said, and someone was asking her, how did they get changed in church? The pastor be do a deliverance prayer for you. And it was a simple thing. The more you hear the word, the more it changes you. And, and that's why church people, when people make mistakes, just calm down. Whatever mistakes people make, don't throw them out of church. Keep them in church. The reason why is that if you throw them out of church, you expose them to Satan. Keep them in church. Keep them hearing the word of God. If a man can keep hearing the word of God, the word of God will change him or her. The reason why is that there's nothing that has the power to change a man than the word of God. So a girl gets pregnant outside wedlock. You say we should throw her out. Or you, you, know, or you say she, she's compelled to go and marry the man that impregnated her. Listen to me, ladies. If you ever get pregnant outside wedlock, that's not the only reason why you should marry the person that impregnated you. Or else you will mortgage your future to unhappiness. Marry a man because you love him, not because you got pregnant. Because you can get pregnant for an idiot. Glory to God. And don't cover one mistake with a bigger mistake. One mistake was getting pregnant. The bigger mistake is now what? It's not marrying him. And ultimately, you now hate yourself, hate your child because you found yourself in a terrible place. Don't make your life a living hell. Glory to God. I say glory to God. And if you have made big mistakes in your life, let to forgive yourself. At the end of the day, who has no sin? The Bible says, he that has no sin should take the stone and cast it. The only person that had the right to cast the stone was Jesus. But he didn't cast the stone because the one that was sinless offered us grace. Never allow your past ruin your future. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. 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 Someone say hallelujah. The kindest thing you can do for yourself is to let people go when they want to go. The kindest thing you can do for yourself is to let people go when they want to go. Refusing to begging them, refusing to chasing them to stay in your life. You know why? Until some people leave, they can't make room for put that value to come into your life. And some people just have to leave. They're taking space.
Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So James chapter 1. James chapter 1. He says this, and if any man be a hearer of the word and not to do, and let me tell you something then. Let me tell you something. I love the fact that we pray, but there's nothing more powerful than hearing the word. Hearing the word of God is superior to prayer from your pastor. I know that you think prayer is more powerful. That's not true. In fact, there's a song we used to sing. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Da, da. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master. Well, that's not true. That's not true. When you heard about Jesus Christ, the first time after I was born, the next time you heard about him, what was he doing? Praying? It was learning at the temple. It was learning at the temple. And when he was going to die, and he rose from the dead, he was going to go finally. He was praying. No, he was teaching them, and he rose from there and went into heaven. I'm not saying prayer is not powerful. As a matter of fact, have you read Ephesians chapter 6 before? What the Bible talks about the weapon of our warfare. Yes or no? Yes, Which weapon is prayer? There's no weapon called prayer. I hope you know that. You can't remember Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. <laughs> oh, wow. Right, let's read one to go. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness and high place. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. What are the weapons? Number one, stand therefore, having what? Your loins gathered about what? What is truth? The word. What is truth? The word. And having on the what? The breastplate of righteousness. Continue verse 15. Having shut the faith with the pressure of the gospel of what? Peace. What is that again? The word of God. The next verse. And above all, taking the shield of faith, that you may be, what is the shield of other faith come? Pick come by what? Hearing and hearing of the word of God. That you may be to courage all the fury that of the enemy. Verse 17. And taking the helmet of salvation and what? The sword of the spirit. Look, almost everything in the armory is the word, is the word, is the word, is the word. Watch what prayer is. Verse 18. Watch what prayer. Praying always. This is what it says. When you the weapon is the word, but prayer is how you use the word. Oh wow. The weapon is the word, but prayer. So when I have the word, is prayer. I use the word through prayer. Let me give an, a good example. The word is the bullet, prayer is the gun. The reason why your prayer is not working is that you are shooting the gun with that bullet. You are shooting the gun with that bullet. So if someone says this is a gun with that bullet, will you be afraid? No. But put the bullets in the gun. The bullets is the word of God. You know why I'm saying this? I'm saying this to you because one of the biggest things you can do for yourself is to wake up each morning at night and just listen to the word of God. Listen. Read the Bible. That's one way of listening to God. The messages on Harvest TV. If you've not subscribed, go and subscribe and choose one message per day. Every day of my life, I try to make sure I listen to one hour of the Word of God. Someone else teaching apart from my own Bible study. And the reason why is that faith coming by hearing and hearing about the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is so powerful. It cleanses your mind. Because there's so much junk going on in this world. There's so much junk in the emotion. The Word of God cleanses our mind. Praise God. I want to show you, all of you that thought that, I'm not saying prayer is not important. I've not said so. I'm only saying, and that's why, if you want to judge a prayer meeting, Notice the amount of scripture in the prayer. Yes, sir. Very true. Notice. That's how you judge the prayer. Did you act? Let me show you something. Look at how the apostles prayed. Act chapter 2. God punished the devil.
chapter chapter 4 Acts chapter 4 the Bible says in verse 23 and being let go they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had done and when they had heard they lifted up the voice in what I called and said Lord God thou art the one that made the heavens and the earth and the seas and all that is in it. Verse 25. Who by the mouth of thy servant said. They were quoting the book of Psalms. See how they were praying. They didn't just pray. They, they were quoting the book of Psalms. What did they say? This is Psalm 2. In case you don't know it. They said. In, they said Who by the mouth of thy servant said. Why did they eat in rage? And the people imagine the to That's Psalm 2. They were praying from the word of God. They were praying from the word of God. Hallelujah. So let's go back to James chapter 1 so that I can, I can just stay on this teaching. James chapter 1. So I'm saying it because I need you to personally value the word. I need you personally to value the word. Have, have the time you read the Bible. Have a notebook. Either a physical notebook or a digital notebook. Where you write the things you study. Where you write the things you study. Write it down. In fact, I have a friend that is so, is so advanced. He has a book for every book of the Bible because he goes through the whole Bible. So every time he goes back to James, he will bring the book he wrote on James. He will bring the book he wrote on James and add to it because he goes through the whole thing. He says, and, be a, be, and if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man, it's like unto a man that beholdeth his natural face in the glass and and he beholded himself and goeth away and straight away he forgets. So when you hear the word of God, how do you become a doer? The first thing is the consciousness. You must be conscious of what you hear. You must, you must, when you wake up in the morning, what did I hear yesterday? You must put in your mind. You must be conscious. You must be conscious. Oh, I learned that I'm a priest of God. Praise God. I'm a priest of God. I learned that I should not love the world. Hallelujah. I'm a lover of God. I don't love the world. You must be conscious. You must say to yourself, the reason why is that what you live out is what you're conscious of. What you leave out is what you're conscious of. So how do you submit yourself to God's word? Look at verse 25 now. Verse 25. It says, But whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, and you know, all of in the choir, the, the reason why you must know the word of God is that a musician or a singer can never sing beyond his revelation of God's word. Yeah. You can never sing. What can you sing? What you are singing is what's in the word of God. So, if you don't know the Bible, you will just start singing, Ya, yo, ya, yo, ya, ya, yo, 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 ya, ya, yo, 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 yo. And the reason why is that you don't know what else to sing. You know, I, I, I saw one of the music ministers sent me a video about a minister speaking against chance recently. She told me, like, maybe yesterday. And, you know, he said, What do I think? I said, I agree 50%. I said, Because number one, there's a place, there's, you know, there's a place of melody in your heart, which can come as a chant. But a chant must be followed by words. Because you are not built by sound, we are built by words. We are built by words. You can't just be built by say, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, and what? We are not built by sounds. We are built by words. So, what should happen is that after the chant, there should not be what? Words. Glory to God. There should be words so that, so that, so that you know, as we're making melody in our hearts to God, then the words, the words, and, and that's how you know you attend a proper doctrinal church. Because, you know, when you attend to church, there's what they call a, doc a church must have doctrine identity. I'll give an example. In our church, have you wondered why we don't say, fall down and die? Let them catch fire. Hope you know those things don't come out of my mouth by mistake. I will tell you the reason why. But the reason why is that some of you, you don't do it because you are here. But if you find yourself in another church, all of a sudden, next thing, fall down and die, die, die. Die, 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 catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. You know, you wonder, what do you attend? 
Why don't you say father and die? You need to ask yourself. The reason why is that number one, demons are spirit and spirits never die. The ba- Jesus Christ never told any demon to die. He says we can bind them. Why? Because they are spirit, they can be restricted by binding. But after some time, they will return. That's why when the devil tempted Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and the devil went out for a season. You can only bind, you will cast them out. Once you cast out, they will, they will, they will go somewhere else and that one will come here because they can't die. Simple intelligence. If demons die, won't we have finished killing them by now? Won't you have finished killing them by now? So, pray prayer that works, not things you think. Praise God. But when you say fire, it's more graphic. Don't you understand? It's more graphic. It's very graphic. It's a fire! Question, how did Jesus Christ deal with demons? Did he call fire? He says, you shall cast out devils. He says, you call fire on them. What would the fire do to them? Burn them. Do demons have flesh that fire can burn? Demons are spirits. You, they can be burned. Praise God. The Bible tells us what we can do to demons. It says, in my name you shall cast out demons. What does that mean? If a demon is operating this side, you can tell the demon to leave. You will cast it out. And that's what he himself did. He casted out demons out of people and regions. And the Bible says, when you cast out the demon, why do we keep casting them out? Because when you cast them out, the Bible says they will return. And that's why God made hell fire. You know why? Because God made the lake of fire. You, Bible, God made hell. When it's, I would say lake of fire, you know, just God made hell. Hell is a spiritual prison for demons and demon and angel, um, fallen angels. But their time to enter there has not come. Ultimately, there will be a padlock in that place. Then the world will be free. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So don't, don't, you know, you know, yeah. Some things sound nice, but they are not just biblical. They sound nice. You know, they sound nice. You know, I've heard a prayer before. Uh... I, I don't even have to tell you in English. The prayer was said in Yoruba. I would say it in Yoruba, but if you don't know it in Yoruba, so, so bad. Oh, bad. Oh, bad. Oh, bad. Oh, bad. Oh, Translation. Lord, turn my enemy to rats. Then turn me to cats. To be chasing the rats and be eating him. Come on. This is not African magic. Lord, do Tom and Jerry for me. <laughs> praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. But what you have to do is to give yourself to the word of God. All you have to do what is to give yourself to the word of God. Is to give yourself to the word of God. The same thing in our church, if someone is demon possessed, I never say bring them up with this people outside. Why should you bring them outside? The reason why is that if you put the attention on demons, they will manifest more. They will not take the sin. Uh-huh. 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 Because they know. See, you don't understand. Demons love attention. And any church where demons is given attention, that church, a lot of their members will have bad dreams, will have demonic oppressions, and have demonic meditation. The reason why is that faith going by hearing. Because you spend a lot of the service listening to demonic spirits. It will enter you. 
stay away from such places. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, so let's keep going. So, so we're talking about how to be conscious of God's word. The Bible says that you hear the word and you behold. You, you, it says it forgets. It forgets. You know, it forgets. You need to have, you need to, let me tell you something. When you hear the word of God, you need to practice meditation. What is meditation? Meditation is as simple as this. Maybe you read the Bible, Christ in me is the hope of glory. See, your head has heard it, but your heart does not know it. You want it to enter your heart. You, you need to imagine it. You say, thank you, Jesus. Christ, Christ, Christ. That means Christ, the anointed one. Christ, the person of Christ. Christ that did all the works of miracles. He said, Christ is in me. You, you begin to, he said, Christ is not beside me. He said, Christ is in me. Christ is in his Christ is in me. If he's in me, so where is cancer? He said, Christ is in me. If he's in me, where is failure? He said, Christ is in me. Oh my God. He said, Christ, oh my God. The power that made heaven and on earth, he's in me. As you say that, the reality of the truth dawns on your spirit. You know, this morning I was praying. There's a, there's a scripture in Matthew. Jesus Christ said, He said that the Father that walks in me is. He said the Father. He said that the Father that walks is in me, referring to the Holy Ghost, because Jesus recalled the Holy Ghost His Father. I hope you know that. Matthew chapter one. Jesus Christ said. Jesus Christ said that. He said, Jesus, Bible says of Jesus Christ, the child of the Holy Spirit. So He now says, the Father that doeth the work is in me. The Father, what do what the work is in me. Glory to God. So everywhere I go, the Father that do what the work is in me. The Father. So Jesus Christ said, the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rabbi Yakata. So you know, when you say give me power, what do you mean? Give me power. The Holy Ghost is in you, power is inside. The Father that do what the work is where is in me. We say, you know, some people say more anointing. What is more anointing? That's not like more anointing. When the Holy Ghost came, He came with all the anointing. So it's for me. How much of the anointing can I draw out of my spirit? The Father that dwelleth in me. See, see what it says, John chapter 14. Believe that I'm the Father, and the Father is in me, and the word I speak unto you. He said, But the Father that dwelleth in me, He doeth the work. The Father that dwelleth in me doeth the work. So you're going to speak, he said, the Father that dwelleth in me doeth the work. The Father that dwelleth in me. The Father that dwelleth in me. He dwelleth in me. As a cell leader, you're afraid for self You're afraid. Why are you afraid? The Father that dwelleth in me doeth the work. The Father that dwelleth in me dwelleth the work. What you're doing is that you're allowing the scripture come alive to you. When you start reading the Bible this way, the, the word of God will come alive to you. It will be more than the book. It will become a reality. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Please, let's finish. Let's finish. Praise God. So, how do you submit to the word of God? The first thing is this. Prioritize the word of God. Do what? Prioritize the word of God. How do you prioritize the word of God? Give time to the word. Give time to the word. This is part of consecration. Prioritize the word of God. Give time to the word. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, quickly. Joshua chapter 1 in verse 8. Prioritize the word of God. Some of you come to church without writing. Have a notebook to write. Have a notebook to write. The things are important in your life, you write them down somewhere. Write this one down too. See what the Bible says. And the book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt what? And that's how I was just teaching you. Meditate when? It even said read the Bible once. It says day and night. Once you wake up in the morning, meditate. You want to sleep? Meditate. Prioritize the word. He says, day and night. Why? That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein, that thou mayest make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. Prioritize the word. Let me show you another scripture. Job chapter 23 verse 12. How do you prioritize the word? Give time to the word of God. If you want to be consecrated, you have to submit to the word of God. You, will, you become a word student. Consecration is making yourself a watch student and giving to the word. Look what it says. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of their lips. 
See what Job said. Rest with what to go. I have what? I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than mine. See what it says. He says, the word of God is more important not than junk, than my necessary meal. He didn't say than food. He said necessary meal. Necessary meal. I know you love Akwata TV. But that one fits your flesh. Look for what fits your spirit. There's this thing, you just be tapping, 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 tapping. Tap the word. You have spent three hours tapping that app. Tapping, 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 tapping. What have you tapped the word? No wonder your life is not tapping. Because for your life to tap, tap what makes it taps. Praise God. Look at him and say, tap the word. He says, I've esteemed the word of God of his mouth more than my necessary meals. And if you're going to be consecrated, listen to me. Be careful of food. Food again. Some of you, if they want to carry you away, all you need to hear is food. Once you hear food, you have entered. Once you hear food, you have joined. Once you hear food, you have signed up. Remember that we Eve ate our way out of the garden. Yes, sir. Don't eat your life out of the garden. Yes, sir. Once there's food, it's not as if you like Sino or you just like, but once there's food, the way you become comfortable. Even our master, he was tempted by food. Are you sure this food is not meant to take your destiny? The Bible speaks of a man that sold his bed right because of a morsel of bread. And you must learn something. Anytime you are hungry, never negotiate on a hungry stomach. You will make a bad negotiation. You will just say, guy, do you want to eat? Say no. You see, it's so difficult. You, you want to eat? <laughs> Who is paying, me or you? As long as you are paying, I'm okay. Glory to God. So how do you prioritize the word? Give time to the word of God. The second thing is that value and esteem the word. Let me say value and esteem the word. Let me tell you what that means. I'll give what I, that, that means. Um, let me, this guy stand. Are, are you new in church or this is your church? This is your church. Stan, what's your name? Dexter. You guys don't know this guy. He's just sitting in the front row. If I just come and not tell you that, Dexter is actually my younger brother. Or let me say that, Dexter is my older brother. Everybody around him will just go, oh, wow. Good afternoon. Ah, Pastor's brother, good afternoon. You know, all of a sudden, you esteem him differently because of the connection. Treat the word of God with esteem. Don't just be as if it's like daddy said, mommy said, my boss said, president said. No, it is God's word. The honor you give to God puts all his word. In, in those days when I was young, when your Bible felt that you need and pray. Who remembers? If ever father like you need and pray, he said, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. God forgive me, God forgive me. See, that was religion, but there was saints in it. The saints was that the word of God was weighty. It was weighty. Let the word of God be weighty to you. Don't say, and so what? Now, 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 now Bible will go chop. Just kind of canality. Now Bible will go chop. Every time chop, 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 Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now it go chop. So canal. Everything has to be about mundane things. Extend the word. When the Bible says the word of God says, after that revere, like, oh, thank you, Jesus. God said, oh, wow. Thank you. Praise God. So the first thing is to prioritize the word. The second thing that you submit to the word, lay aside contrary opinions to the word of God. It said so. He says, let's lay aside all superfluity of the flesh. Lay aside contrary opinions. 
uh, you know, the Bible was raised. Church was not compulsory. That was the way you were raised. How did God was raised you? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 28. Hebrews 10 to 25 rather. Hebrews 10 to 25. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of ourselves. One lady told me, said, my mother said that there's nothing wrong with dating two or three people. It's about having a... My mother said, one lady told me, said, my mother said there's nothing wrong with dating two or three people. It's about having a plan B and plan C. He said, because men are not stable. I understand the way your mother raised you. But now that you're a Christian, raise yourself the right way. Some of you were raised to, to, some of you were raised to, to date only men that have substance, even if they don't have Christ. But now that you're a Christian, raise yourself another way. But what it takes is that you must lay aside all other opinion and say, I was raised this way, but this is what the Bible says. I'm going to put down what the Bible says and raise myself this way. So he says, he says, look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Let's go, want to go. He was not advising you, he was telling you what you should do. He said, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Glory to God. Lay aside all superfluity. There are cultures that are great. There are cultures that need to change. Glory to God. The third one I've thought about it. Be meek. Be teachable when it comes to God's word. That's how you submit to God's word. Be teachable. So every time you hear God's word, there's a, there's a, there's a teachability when it comes to God's word. Because no one is wiser than God's word. God's word is the wisest. So every time God's word is being taught... Don't say, how do I defend? How do I argue? Always ask yourself, how do I adjust? Because the word is the truth. So we talk about forgiveness. One says, <laughs> you know, everything I can do about forgiveness, no, I can't take that one. If you know what she did to me, if you know what she did to me, forgiveness can be tough and painful. But that's why forgiveness is for the matured. It takes a lot of maturity. And let me tell you, unforgiveness is for the weak. And when you forgive someone, it's, it's not about the person, it's about you. Because forgiveness shows the quality of your maturity and strength. Glory to God. You've heard the word of God about savings. How God says save. And I say, oh, easy. 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 I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I don't forgive myself. So why don't you have a savings? You now give all the excuses. But that, see, if God's word, because you know why God's word is powerful? God's word does not just tell you what to do. It gives you the ability to do it. So once you hear God's word, the word comes with wisdom. The word comes with ability to do it. See, that's it. And let me tell you something there. You will never realize the ability of God's word until you accept it and say, okay, I want to do it. Once you accept it, the ability will come out. Once you say that, okay, I've heard God's word, I want to serve, then all of a sudden, everything you need to serve will come together. And if you're not saving and you're waiting for the perfect time to save, you will never save. The reason why is that saving is first a decision. And it's a decision you have to prioritize because you understand that your future is at stake if you don't save today. And if you don't plan for your future, nobody will plan for you. And if you don't plan for your money, others that don't work will plan for your money and use it. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. The next thing is this. The next thing, the next thing is this. Let the word of God guide you. Let the word of God guide you. Let, let it guide you. Let, it, let the word of God influence your thinking. When you're buying clothes, let it influence your clothes. Praise God. When you're fighting the marriage, let the word of God influence your fight in the marriage. When you want to choose who to marry, let the word of God influence you. When you want to do business, let the word of God influence you. 
How can you be so heartless selling fake drugs? And you say, what is there? As fast as I'm going to pay my tithe. What kind of foolish tithe is that? You think God accepts all this kind of money? You sell drugs and people use fake drugs and die. And you think that the money you will give from that is what will glorify God. Yet, families lose their loved ones. Families lose their breadwinners because of that. You are dating a guy that is a fraudster and you are praying that he will do well. So you come to church, he said, he said, he said Lord, you say, the Bible says you will bless the works of our hands. See, it, when it says I will bless the work of the hand, it's qualified. It's the work, it's a righteous work that God blesses. So someone said, what, 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 what is wrong with that? How can your job be making others cry for you to be rich? And you think that God will bless that. And because, you know why you are praying for him? It's because you have not been on the victim side. It's because you have been on the enjoyment side. So when he, when he, when the manga, when the manga pays, all of a sudden you have gotten Louis Vuitton. You have gotten this and this. You're like, oh, God has done it. Hey, God did not do anything. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. You will be surprised when we get to heaven. A lot of testimonies was not the hand of God. And that's why, don't let testimony pressure you. Only God knows who is serving him. Praise God. Let me give you one more. Be hungry for the word. First Peter 2, 2. Be hungry for the word be hungry see there's a way you know you can come to church be be hungry for the word train yourself to be hungry for the word that's the life of consecration so people are hungry for cars hungry for clothes hungry for vibe hungry for steez hungry for pleasure hungry for all these things but you be hungry for the word praise god see first that's chapter 2 verse 2 let's you want to go as newborn babes, do what? Desire the sincere milk of the word. He said, desire, desire. He desire. Let it be hungry. When you go and see your friend, you say, ah, when I read Ephesians 3 today, verse 20 to 24, my God, you just download. Ah. Every morning you upload your status, something that shook you as you read the Bible. What scripture that challenged you? That's what it means to desire the word. When you're, when you're in church like this, there's a way your, your head is just focused. You just want to get the word. You just want to take the word. You're like, you like Mary. Oh my God. You just want to go for the word. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's what it means to submit to the word. It's not about what I feel. I'm submitted to the word. I'm passionate about the word of God. My steez is the word of God. Praise God. What's your steez? The word of 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 God. The word of God. Glory to God. Were you blessed tonight? Are you blessed tonight? The proof that you are getting consecrated is that your thinking will start changing. Your value will start changing. So it starts with a change of thinking and value. Then your taste will start changing. They will be telling you that. Let's go. You say, go. Ah, no. Nah. Not my will. Yours be done. Ah, you, you, at home, you'll be reading your Bible like this. Friends, ah, what are you studying for? You say, I'm reading my Bible. Ah, with all these notes, ah, you don't know. No, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a son of the word. I'm a son of the word. I'm a son of the word. Okay, 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 okay let's go and eat. He said, No, that can wait. Food does not carry me again. There was a time food used to carry me. There was a time you could carry me with food, but I've changed. Praise God. 
I said, praise God. Hallelujah. Just imagine your boyfriend comes over, your wife comes over. Honey, do you know what I read in the Bible today? You start discussing, start discussing. Not, not, not what's the color of your lingerie? What was that? What's your best sex style? Are you married? See, there, there are questions that, let me tell you something. There are questions that once they ask those questions, just delete yourself on the WhatsApp group. What's your best sex style? What do you want to know my best sex style for? What's the, what, what, what's the color? He said, what, is it, what's the color of a lingerie? Do you wear brown or not? What's the nastiest thing you've ever done? Why do you want to know the nastiest thing I've ever done? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Be all of things that the reason why you want to know is that you want to use it as a yardstick to plan your evil work. Glory to God. What's the nastiest thing you've ever done? You, you mean, you mean, you mean, you've not, you've not, don't be shy. Don't, don't, don't be shy, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Feel free, feel free. Feel free means be canna. Feel free means what? Be canna. Someone say, how far can we go? What can we touch? If you need things to touch, you don't know how Muslim pack. When they touch things by free, but you just pay and touch. Praise God. Praise God. Consecration. 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 I'm in love with God's word. So it's of this kind of conversation, you know, you know, sim- you know, um, I mean, I have those cards which is like a Christian concentration game. Just things like simple things. What are the name of the apostles? People struggle. Name the books of the Bible. People struggle. Name the book of the Bible that starts with J. People struggle. There are so many things you can ask. So why, 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 why is it that the other things you like to ask? What do you like to drink? If you ever want to drink, what makes you tipsy? When you're drunk, how are you when you're tipsy? These are conversations of the flesh. One day they just get drunk and do what? Praise God. You cannot say that one day they just pray for three hours. They just get drunk. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. Send me a tantalizing picture. <laughs> Tantalize God. <laughs> Sweet sensation only. <laughs> Praise God. Lord, I give myself to your word. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I give myself to your word. 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 Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I give myself to your word. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word again. And we thank you for this series, how you are unveiling towards values consecrations and i'm asking you in jesus name that please lord today we give ourselves to your word and we become what you want us to be in jesus mighty name amen Amen. praise the lord somebody said the word of god is changing me that's it it's changing me i'm changed yeah, I'm changed. My, my, my perspective is changed. My talk is changed. My view is changed. My friends are saying I'm changing. The word of God is what changing me. I'm, I'm excited about the word of God. 
I don't 